If you knew me 10 years ago, you probably wouldn't have expected to be seeing me here unashamedly spreading the message of the gospel to anyone who would listen and responding to the most challenging objections from the critics of Christianity online today. And if you knew me back then, you probably would have only seen a person who is in some ways far more flawed than a lot of the people that you know. And I would have been one of the last people that you'd expect to see doing these kinds of videos. And if it was me and you back then, then I would have been right beside you agreeing that there's no way that someone like me would be here today. Now, I'll tell you the full story another time, but for now, fast forward to a semi-changed man about three years ago after I just had surgery to get a cochlear implant after unexpectedly losing my hearing for an unknown reason that doctors were never able to identify. So if you don't know how cochlear implants work, they're little hearing devices that have internal and external components to them. And the internal component is surgically implanted behind your ear, but before it works, you usually have to start learning how to hear all over again. So depending on the degree of hearing loss, it can take years to start being able to hear somewhat decently. And that's because you have to relearn how to hear all over again by training your brain to start understanding electrical signals instead of sound waves. So anyways, after the surgery, I was obviously out of work for a while because I wasn't able to hear much. And since I wasn't able to hear anything, I spent more time on Facebook where I could talk to people without having to hear. Now one day, and somehow, I stumbled into a Facebook group and saw some atheists and Christians debating the existence of God and the validity of Christianity. I looked at the arguments that people were making and I thought to myself, hey, that doesn't make sense, or that's not right, and thought that I could answer these objections pretty easily. So I ended up becoming that guy who spent countless hours debating with strangers online. Around that time in one of the debate groups, I met a guy from Sydney, Australia, his name was Steve Goodwin, and him and I seemed to connect intellectually pretty well. I thought he was pretty smart, and we found ourselves debating atheists together a lot. We debated him every day for a year straight, and about two years ago, Steve started telling me that he thought that I should start a YouTube channel. Now I listened, but I didn't really have a desire to do one because I've always been really awkward in front of any kind of camera and I hardly watched any YouTube anyway. So I wasn't all that interested, but I still flirted with the idea. Then one day he messaged me and he basically said, start doing YouTube videos. I got you a camera and all the basic stuff you need. What's your address? I'm gonna ship it to you today. And I was like, well, I guess now I gotta give it a shot, even though I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. So I set up to record my first awkward video, and I remember thinking how I didn't even know what a decent video was supposed to look like, and how no one was probably gonna watch it, but maybe that was okay because I knew that it was gonna be painfully awkward. And then I remember wondering how I would go from zero subscribers to 10 subscribers, and how crazy it would be to hit a thousand, even though I knew I probably never would. Now, fast forward until you get to today, and next month marks the two year anniversary of this channel. And as of today, I've published over 160 videos and I'm coming up on 40,000 subscribers. And almost daily now, we get messages and emails and comments about how people's lives have been touched and impacted through the videos. And we even get regular comments from atheists and non-Christians who say that the videos changed their views drastically and how the videos successfully refuted the anti-Christian videos that they were previously convinced of before watching our videos. Now, that humbles me thinking how God can make an impact through some videos Videos that little old me started recording in my small two bedroom apartment living room with a donated camcorder. And for that, and seeing how God has used this ministry to reach hundreds of thousands of people every single month around the world, it makes me feel incredibly grateful and undeserving. Seeing the channel analytics shows just how many countries we're getting the gospel to every single day as well, which is incredible. Now, though it's been absolutely amazing doing response videos and spreading the message of the gospel to so many people throughout the world, if I'm being perfectly honest, it's also been a real struggle to try to keep it going. Now, I'm the kind of person who always pushes through stuff until it's almost impossible to keep going. Like even with practical stuff like a car, I will drive that thing until the wheels fall off or the engine just stops working. I'm that kind of person. But with working full time, a wife, a five year old and a one year old and teaching here locally and also working on two documentaries, I'm starting to realize just how little me and Superman have in common. I finally come to admit to myself that I just can't keep going at this rate. I'm drained most of the days and it's honestly becoming harder and harder for me to put out videos while also balancing the rest of my obligations. Now, if you've been following me for a while, then you know that I'm not one that talks like this, but I just wanna be honest with you guys because I really do consider you guys to be my online family. And if I'm honest, that's where I've been at for a while now. But at the same time, I can't deny how much these videos are needed. 
Now, here's a perfect example. So in 2018, BuzzFeed published a video called I Stop Believing in God After Pastor in a Mega Church. And they changed the video name now, but the video actually went viral. And today the video has about 2 million views. Now, I actually made a Christian response to the video to try to help correct the misunderstandings and negative perceptions of Christianity that were in the video because I knew that the video was skewing the perception of Christianity to hundreds of thousands of people each and every day. But because I was so busy, I had to wait a week or two after the BuzzFeed video came out before I could record. And once I finally got my response video out, the BuzzFeed one had close to a million views. YouTube started recommending my video alongside of it. So as the BuzzFeed video grew, so did my Christian response video. My video ended up getting about 200,000 views within the first month that it was up. But now I always think about how I missed the potential to reach over a million viewers who potentially could have clicked on it and had their misunderstandings of Christianity corrected. So now I did a video last year explaining the statistics of our younger generations that show how they don't watch much TV at all and they spend most of their time on YouTube instead. So YouTube is where they get their information from, whether they're seeking the information or not. Now, the bad news is right now, YouTube is dominated by anti-Christian content. And by comparison, there's hardly any well-articulated, informed, intelligent Christian responses that the younger generation can relate to and understand. Gen Zs are our literal future and how Christianity is understood is gonna be heavily influenced by what the kids see today on YouTube. So that's why I think it's important that our voices are heard and that they're heard before their religious opinions get deeply rooted into something that's incorrect or false. So on the one hand, I know that I just can't continue and you're going on like this. But on the other hand, I also firmly believe that God created me for a purpose such as this and that now God is calling me into something more, something deeper. So with that being said, I decided to start working towards turning this ministry into a full-time mission. Because if this ministry goes full-time, then we can make sure that there's some well-articulated and clear takes on cultural issues, viral news, and anti-Christian video responses that will be heard first, or at least will pop up first alongside of the viral video. This is how we can ensure that the Christian voice is heard right away and not only that but we can continue to spread the gospel to literally millions of people around the world every single day so my goal here is not only to share my thoughts on current cultural events from a thoughtful christian perspective but also to create full playlists of refutations to the leading anti-christian video makers in the world so that way people have clear and accessible playlists where they can find responses and refutations so if this channel has impacted your thinking your perspective or your life and you've considered partnering with this ministry before prayerfully consider doing so now because if we want to see this become a reality now is the time that we're going to need your support and if you haven't thought about supporting it before remember that if this channel has impacted your life in any kind of way it also has the potential to impact millions of other lives as well the best way to support us is through patreon and supporters on patreon also get a lot of perks so go ahead and click the link down below and i'll see you guys over there but before i go i guess uh i don't really know how to word this but I guess I'll just say it. What do you mean?